We're back. Andrew Capone, who's got the action? My partner is always Caleb Knight taking a stand. Arkansas Derby, we're down south. It's uh, it, We'll see what happens. There's some interesting horses in this race. We, had, we talked about it last week with Baffert being allowed to enter now, so we have – Baffert horses under different trainer names. Um, they're still Baffert horses in my mind, but there's a, a good little field here down a good little field in Arkansas. I'm excited for this race. Um, I'm interested to see what's going to happen in terms of this pace setup. I think the last race down there, we, we saw the track continuously flipping and then it rained right before it. Weather doesn't look like there's going to be anything, any issue this weekend, but it's definitely a race I'm interested in betting on. Um, and I'm very excited to see what's going to happen uh, with these Baffert horses. Now they change if they still keep some of that, um, that juice that they had going. So I'll start us off here with the number one Kavad. Um, Hartman runner draws the one hole where you don't want to be on dirt routes at, at Oaklawn park, but this horse has the shot of uh, the horse has the shot of winning. And that's, only one way, and that's catch me if you can. Horse needs to go early and try to keep on running and see if they can get up. The inside gives the opportunity that the horse doesn't have to worry about clearing, so maybe that one post isn't as bad. Um, if the others do keep it tight enough, though, I, I don't know if this horse has the ability to run all the way. Um, the speed figures are interesting. We'll I'll, I'll talk a little bit about another runner. I think it's going to be up near him at the, at the beginning later. Um, but the horse has an opportunity possibly to run away with it, but it's really going to be that break and keep going. Um, might be a little bit a distance issue. I'm not necessarily sure, uh, but I'd like to see this horse. Uh, give it, I'll give this horse another shot here. I'm definitely going to be using it underneath in a lot of my verticals. Uh, what did you think of the two and the three? Yeah, I've been sitting on my hands waiting to bet uh, Cavett in the Pat Day Miles. So I'm hoping that's where he shows up. But uh, we'll see how he turns out uh, on Saturday in the Arkansas here. As far as number two, chasing time, I thought this horse ran okay in the Rebel. I don't really know what to make of the Rebel on the whole. Uh, that's a race that was won by a, a 75 to one shot, Unoho, who returns today in the Arkansas. You know, Ethereal Road and Barber Road kind of rounded out that race. It was just a bit of a head scratcher where New Grange, the heavy Baffert favorite, took all the money and just really didn't do much running. They did get some rain right before that. So perhaps he just didn't care for the track or the track turned over that day. It's tough to say, but of all the horses that were kind of going into that race, I didn't think Chasing Time looked particularly impressive. Uh, he just sort of ran evenly and then lost contact with the field a little bit late and faded to a fifth place finish by about four lengths. I thought the top three finishers all looked significantly better when finishing the strongest in that race. So chasing time is a horse that is likely to be forwardly placed while they're not on the lead, but he's not one that I'm really excited to bet here. Uh, I just didn't see enough from him in that rebel and his prior body of work doesn't do much to inspire confidence either. The number three Barber road Oh boy, this horse and I have been going back and forth. And I think if I was going to back one horse from the uh, Rebel Southwest Smarty Jones kind of path to this race here, it probably would be Barber Road. I think he's had a ton of excuses in his last handful of races between running into traffic and being a little too far off the pace, not getting a clean run until it's too late. And again, I didn't think he had the best trip that day in the Rebel but with a horse like this, you start to get to a point where is he just making his own trouble? Is he just a difficult horse to ride? And it's fair to question, uh, does he have that kind of killer instinct after settling for minor awards by pretty small margins in each of his last couple of starts? That being said, I'd probably give this horse one more chance, especially if you get anything near that morning line of about uh, eight to one here. So I do think he is pretty interesting in this field. I think that takes us to uh, the Baffert uh refugee doppelganger so any thoughts there Andrew? yeah but before i go barber wrote that horse uh, the definition of insanity caleb <laughs> i mean just uh, just again and again and just one more time let's see what happens uh that's a, that's a horse that that even my, i have to say myself has definitely made uh made me go a little bit crazy um Bring the doppelganger. This previously Baffert trainee in a different bar now. Johnny V flies in to takes the takes the to take them out. Training very very well in California. Um, horse just came in two days ago. Horse is a little bit of a, a, a one run closer. Um, when you look at what it's done in the past, it, it's, it's stalked, closed. Um, that first it, it had a little bit of an issue in the gate in its first start, but lightly raced. You know, only three races under its belt. I'm interested to see what's going to happen here. Um, wonder, wondering if that Baffert juice is still intact and, and if the horse still has the opportunity. Um, I'm just not going to bet the horse. It's good, definitely going to be a contender. But for me, I just morally, I, I will not be backing. Uh, I will not be backing this horse, especially when it's uh, going to his assist. And it's not even like it's really changing barns here. So horse that's going to be on 
coming off of it, uh, definitely has one big run in it, but not for me in, in this stretch. Uh, I'm not interested. Bring it to the fine. Uoho, the winner of Risen Star in the wet. Second in the slop at Duck in the Weather, which you and I have spoken about five or six times now as a very key race. Look at horses that have come out of that race. I thought we'd seen this horse in the Wood Memorial. Um, it is in New York bred, but I was told that there was a clerical error in paperwork and the horse was not eligible for some of the New York bred bonuses. So they decided to stay away from New York and then think they have a better opportunity here, which is why I think the horse definitely has an upgrade. Um, I think the horse a lot of last time's trip was helped by that freak shower they had right before it sort of created a setup we saw um the dirt was not necessarily sloppy but it had that that wet muddiness to it and people didn't want kickback so they went there they went to the lead and, and this horse just got a dream trick it stalked outside three and a half back i think it was like three and a half back two wide um stayed saved ground on the on the far turn uh and then just made up space and won that race at a huge price. Um, i'm not going to be backing this horse i hope it takes a lot of money um clearly the the morning line Makers didn't necessarily love this horse either coming into this race, but we'll see what happens. Unoho is going to be a toss for me. I hope it takes some money, and I hope it really uh, we get some good adjustment in odds here. What did you think of the six and seven, Secret Oath and Ben Diesel? Yeah, the phrase, uh, if you miss the wedding, don't go to the funeral, comes to mind with a horse like Unoho. So uh, we'll be interested to see how the public bets him. That being said, uh, the number six, Secret Oath, such a cool spot for this filly. This feels like such uh, a D-Wayne move here to – throw the Philly in against the boys in the Arkansas Derby here. And she's just been outstanding since uh, entering her three-year-old season, just absolutely dismantling all of the competition already has a spot in the Kentucky Oaks gate if she wants it. So I love the connections, having the confidence to take on the boys here. And if you look at her body of work and her speed figures, there's no reason to think that she can't compete. I mean, they've made her the morning line favorite at five to two here. I'm not sure exactly what the public's going to do and where she'll end up, but I really like this filly. I thought that despite having a couple of uh, you know minor spots of trouble in her last start or two, that she just runs away from these fields. I mean, she won the honeybee under wraps when it wasn't even asked pretty much and still dropped by seven lengths. I mean, if you just look at the final times and, and we talked about the rain on that or uh, rebel day, so it isn't exactly apples to apples, but you know, at the same distance on the same day, she finished a full second ahead of Unoho, uh, mm -hmm. who ended up winning the Rebels. So I think that uh, she looks really, really good. She loves Oaklawn Park. The distance doesn't seem like it'll be any problem whatsoever. I think Secret Oath is a, is a major player here. And, and from a moral perspective, I'll be rooting for the Philly. That takes us to number seven, Ben Diesel. Uh, this is a horse that I think is going the wrong way in his form cycle a little bit here. Uh, you could maybe chalk up that last race to where he just didn't really care for the moisture in the track. They did get that rain right beforehand and his race in the sloppy Jones, uh, excuse me, the smarty Jones in the slop was also, you know, one of his uh, poorer races. So if you kind of just squint and only look at his fast track races, I, I guess there's maybe some reason to be optimistic. It is Dallas Stewart who definitely is known for uh, getting runners like this to show up on big days. But for me, he just seems that in his better races, he's really tripped out and still hasn't been able to get the job done. I'd be surprised if he can turn the tables on the competition today. I think that takes us to number eight, Cyberknife. So uh, any thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, this is one of those horses um, uh, I, I just don't necessarily know what to do with. I think Cox is grasping here for a little bit. I think he's looking for a derby gate. Um, this is this gun ready prodigy hasn't seen stakes company since the sixth place finish at the LeCompte. Um, doing okay it seems like it's in every other racehorse it, it you know we look at, at the races and it's it runs a good race it doesn't run a good race runs a good figure doesn't run a good figure well this is lining up to be a bad race um on its form so a horse that i'm not necessarily interested in um i will say though to note is that the top uh, time form figure does match the fastest in the field so we, we it is an opportunity here if the horse can I'll come out of that pattern of every other for the horse to have some run and possibly have a win here um i'm just not seeing anything with this uh this the Cox horses as of late. Um, but brings me to the last horse, the outside, we the people. Uh, the Brissette trainee has done nothing wrong, continues to prove each race. Works are absolutely monster. It's working with an amazing work mate partner right now. Um, gets the outside, the draw, which I don't mind at all. Uh, if you look at the time form pace projections, I didn't necessarily agree with them. Uh, they put the horse a little bit further back. I think this is a horse that wants to be up and near the lead. Um, I think this stalker place, uh, stalker 
style horse gets the right pace set up here. I think the one goes and there's an opportunity for this horse to sit off um, and use that entire long Oakland Park stretch to sort of come up on the outside and keep running. Um, I like this horse. The 70, 72 money line seems a little short to me. I, I would like to see a little more than that, but definitely the horse that I'm interested in um, and I will be having will have on my tickets. Um, that's our field of nine for the Arkansas Derby. Uh, Caleb and I were speaking previously and we said both had the same conclusions that, you know, I would love to see some new blood here for the opportunity to win. I think all the winners that are coming from something else aren't necessarily it. Uh, as you said before, I'd love to see the Philly here and root for and, and see the opportunity. And this is definitely an op a race for it to happen. Who did you have as your top pick? Yeah, you're completely right. I wanted to take a new shooter here. I feel like I've just seen enough of the horses coming out of the rebel in the Southwest and just none of them have really impressed me that much. So I did go with the Philly here. It is the morning line favorite. I'm not sure exactly if she'll be the favorite or how much money the Baffert or ex Baffert horse might take. Um, but Secret Oath here was my pick. And again, for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, she's just looked outstanding. Her speed figures fit with this group easily. Um, she does get you know a weight break compared to some of these others, anywhere from you know two to five pounds here. And I think that you know, she loves Oakland. She gets the distance, and there's really no reason I can see that she can't show up at that last race and beat this field. I think a lot of the horses here need to improve to beat her. And if she just runs the same race as, you know, the honeybee, I think she'll be tough to handle. So yeah, I love the spot here. I love the uh, aggressive positioning and the placement and I'm going to go with secret oath to uh, beat the boys. I absolutely love that pick. I'm not going to make the same pick, but I would love to see that. I'd love to see the horse win here and then to see what happens next. Do they run, you know, when they have the opportunity to go both ways, which way do they go? And, and that's always a, a fun, a fun couple of weeks as they decide as we come to that three week mark out where they have to make the decision. So I'm interested to see what happens if if that opportunity comes up. My top pick, I'm going to go on the way outside. As I said, I love the fresh blood. We the people. Horses done nothing wrong. Although the price seems a little short against this field, I think the horse has everything going for it. Pratt's red hot. It's perfect pace set up. Um, I think there's. I don't expect him to run with Kavad, but I expect him to be three off or four off and, and stay pretty close and use that entire long stretch. I, I just think that this is a new blood type of race, and I think this horse has the opportunity to come in. Again, I said that seven to two I think is a little short. I would love to get four or five to one, especially considered some of the players in here, but a horse I'm very interested in playing. Um, long shot. I'm going to play a long shot in this race as well. I'm going to actually go to the inside, go to that one Kavad. I'm, I, love, I love speed. I'm a speed handicapper. That's what I look for. You can't teach speed. It's something that the horse is born with. Um, I mean, this horse can definitely go. Um, races like this tend to be one on or within three lengths of the lead at first call. Uh, we see this over and over again. Uh, I just think that this, uh, this, if this track stays dry and it stays clean, there's a chance that this horse goes and nobody come, nobody catches it. Um, so I'm going to take two horses that I think are both going to be very up near the lead here um, with my top pick as We the People and my long shot as Kavad. Who did you pick as a long shot? Yeah, I struggled to come up with a long shot in this race, to be honest, and I don't have one I feel strongly about, but I think for this race, I'd probably have to hold my nose and kind of cover one eye and pick Barber Road. Uh, this is a horse that I really do think has ability. I think this is a very talented colt, but has really struggled to put it all together. Uh, it seems to still be maturing a lot and uh, finding a lot of trouble in these starts. I'm just going to give him one more pass. And this isn't a horse that I'm going to have a lot of money going through, but the horse always shows up with his late run. I would almost certainly think this horse hits the board here, given his consistency. And with a little bit more racing luck and a cleaner trip, you could have a chance to turn the tables, but uh, not one I have a strong opinion on necessarily. Well, those are great picks. I appreciate you sharing them here. Uh, we have a great field for the Arkansas Derby here. Nine nine horses going one and one-eighth of a mile down in beautiful Oakland Park. Um, they're expecting, I believe I read online, 60,000 people for this weekend's races, trying to set a record for the for the most people there. Uh, good opportunity, good betting opportunity, 12 race card. Uh, this race kicks off pretty later uh, we have three of the three derby prep races they're all actually sort of later we have 6 40 7 35 and i think the jeff ruby's even a little more later than that so definitely a nice little afternoon you could have betting here we ask you to like and subscribe so you get all of our road to the derby videos and we'll be back with one more video this week thanks